Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. It's early July and many growers have tremendous yield potential in their cornfields. On this episode, we're going to visit with BASF agronomist Ken Curra for a great discussion on fungicide strategies to protect grain yield and quality as we move through the summer. Here's Ken Curra. So Ken, when I think about fungicide this time of year in corn crops, I think about yield potential. What's the yield potential of this crop and how does it play in your decision? Yeah, so whether it's an individual farm or just an agronomist such as myself looking at a sales territory or a customer base, man, you look at this corn crop this year, we have a wonderful foundation, right? Uh, just recent rainfalls, in some cases on the weekend, a bit too heavy, but uh, nonetheless, we needed the rain. Subsoil moisture was low. Uh, now the crop has jumped even in the last three days here. And I mean, look at this wonderful crop. Uh, you know, we have a lot of great looking acres, so that weighs into the decision as well as crop prices. So uh, this is about protecting our investment and, uh, and shooting for top yields when we look at the fungicide decision amongst managing uh, for disease, grain diseases, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. going into the, the last half of the growing season. Let's talk a little bit about timing now, Ken. Obviously, um, I think we've got high yield potential here. We've invested in this crop. We want to protect it. What type of timing are we looking at now for application? Yeah, so fungicide application for corn is basically that tassel and silking timing, depending on what your intentions are. If you're looking at using just strictly one of the Strabilioron Group 11 mix products, uh, such as a headline amp, and using that to, uh, to manage and suppress leaf diseases, such as northern corn leaf blight, eye spot, gray leaf spot, a little bit of rust in there as well, and potentially tar spot, which was found in the province last year, you know, for the first time. We look at that scope of diseases. We want to look at a Strabilioron mix product. We can apply that basically any time from tassel emergence to uh, basically brown silk, so the end of the pollination window. If we want to add a group three product like a caramba to that mix with the Strabilioron products, we're going to be looking at green silk timing, which be anywhere from four to 10 days, depending on temperature and how the crop uh, advances at that time of year, but we're looking at green silking. So basically, you know, most of the plants in the field have an inch or more of green silk protruding from the ear to the point where those silks turn brown and are dry, the pollination window's closed, and now we, we can no longer uh, make that application for, for efficacy on uh, vomitoxins and dawn management. Yeah, and I was gonna ask you about vomitoxin and dawn. We've been talking about plant health, right? Keeping that engine moving. Mm -hmm. What about that decision on vomitoxin and, and you know where does insects play in here western bean cutworm for example yeah and and you know the overlying factor here is managing your crop and not the weather right we can't predict the weather uh but we have to look at weather conditions to this point we've been above average for heat we're in a heat spell right now heat spells in southern ontario bring with it uh, basically southwestern and southerly air flows that brings you know insect pressure western bean cutworm from the u.s from the corn belt also brings disease pressure with northern corn leaf blight being imported and that really is the the number one one uh, yield robber is amongst corn foliar diseases. We have to include tar spot in that as well. Um, you know, so we're going to manage the crop and not the weather. If you look at the corn fungicide products we use, whether it's the Group 11 Strabilioron mix products or the or the Group 3 products for uh, managing dawn and vomitoxin potential, uh, we have to look at a preventative approach. So we want to watch the news from the Corn Belt. We want to watch what happens in southwestern Ontario as the crop advances and matures and disease or insect pressure might advance as well. Look at the decision to put a, a western bean cutworm insecticide in the tank if needed. Of course, we follow the scouting and IPM process for that use pattern. But uh, all those things weigh into the decision. At the end of the day, we can't manage the weather, but we can manage this absolutely fantastic crop that right now just has this amazing foundation underneath it. I just, I love the way the crop looks in my territory right now. Uh, this to me, to use the baseball analogy, this is the, this is the fastball right down the chute sitting there saying, hit me, right? We've fertilized this crop well. We got it in the ground in good time. We had above average yield targets. We've got above average pricing. We have everything going for this crop right now now uh, and you know to use a poker term we're pot committed right our money is into the pot we're waiting for that river card to flip over but you know what let's give ourselves the best chance we can and that's that's corn fungicide I just I'm so excited with what this crop could do for us this year 
Hey, one last question. That is, before we round the basis, let's talk stewardship and yes. uh, and multiple modes of action. You know what we need to have in that tank to you know to manage things like resistance and making sure you know you know we're, we're setting ourselves up for success now and in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, Pre-mixed products or tank mixes of different groups of fungicide, absolutely imperative, right? There are still a few single mode of action products on the market today. Uh, those are the ones we'd really like to avoid. Let's use the supply of, uh, of those mixed products first, whether it's the Strabilion mixed products or more importantly, using that tank mix of a Strabilion with a group three for, uh, for Dawn and, and grain quality management. That's the first step. And then when we look at the stewardship aspect on insecticide, uh, you know, the scouting process, right? Let's not just spray preventatively because we've heard they're here or because the traps at the roadside are full. Um, you know, we need to do the scouting. We need to follow the process before we make that decision on insecticide. Awesome. Hey, Ken, uh, great to have you on Corn School. Great insights. I uh, hope we hit a home run. I hope so. It's, uh, it's certainly there to be had. Just love the way this crop looks. <laughs>